video lessons with interactive questions has become a very helpful way to increase the active learning in your class while putting the passive learning outside of your class. The formative feedback integration is so helpful. Programs like Edpuzzle and Nearpod have given you the opportunity to do this. Since YouTube is owned by Google, they've created an integration for YouTube activities directly into Google Classroom. To begin, you just need to create your own assignment. Once the assignment is created, traditionally you've been able to assign a video, link a video to your lesson. Now, when you create video and you search for that video, you can create video activities. At this point, if I click on my video activities, I could release a previously made video from another class or I could search for a current video. If I want to make a fresh video, I just need to go back to the search video option. From here, I can paste a URL or I can type in a search keyword. You can look through the videos. You can even list them by duration if you want a shorter video for your student versus a longer video for your students. Once you've selected your video, you now have the option to add questions. If the video is not accessible, it'll tell you right here on this preview screen. Once you add those questions, you can go through and choose at which point in the video to add them and what type of question to add. Once you pick the video, you have a couple different options. You can add some information, some details for the video, some instructions for your students. You may also find that you don't want to watch the full video. Maybe six minutes is a little bit long for the students or involves some kind of ad at the end and you want it to go just to four minutes, 45 seconds. Anything outside of this time frame will not play for the students. You can see that now my time is at 4.45 over the finish starting at zero. If I wanted to add a question, there are three question op options, multiple choice, check boxes, or open-ended, pretty common, pretty similar to what you might see in things like Google Forms or Edpuzzle or other interactive question tools. Within these questions, I have a couple options as well. Now I can choose a time within the video. I can watch the video. I can find a question and then add it. I'm going to go with multiple choice. So he mentioned phosphorus. So I'm going to type in a question with possible answers. You have the option to shuffle the order. You can add another option, but since it is a multiple choice question, I want to make sure that I have the correct answer chosen. It will tell you if you forget. From here, I can also, I can see the other way of setting a time. Let's say I want that question a little bit later in the video, so they have a little bit of time, they have to go back and rewatch. I'm gonna set it at 20 seconds instead. You can see that the multiple choice was set to 20 seconds on here, and even the video itself has jumped to 20 seconds. Once I'm done with my question, I'm going to hit save and continue. I can add a free response question or open-ended question. Again, I can choose the time that that question happens. When that happens, when I change the time, it's going to switch over uh, to that time in the video and in the setup. I'm going to throw in a question for it. Once you're done with the question, you can hit save and continue. You could also at this point change the type of question. Let's say I want to go with checkbox instead. I could type in my different answers, add other options, shuffle the order. Again, checkbox and multiple choice are very similar, just slightly different format. It is possible to add more than one question at a certain time. You just need to pick the exact same time, pick a type of question. Now, if I go through and I don't choose a correct answer and I click save, it's going to give me a little reminder down here that my question has an error. I may need to return to my question. You can see there's a little error mark as here as well. Now I'm gonna go through, choose the correct answer, and then once I save, I'm done. If I wanna see the video before I share it with my students, you can preview it by clicking on the try as a student button. And you can now see what they see. They'll see how many types of questions, how long the video is, they'll see the instructions. They can go through, they can hit play, and the videos will, or the questions will pop up as the video approaches them, but they can also skip to those important spots throughout the video.
They do have the ability to rewatch. They are unsure. It'll go back to the last question. Let them rewatch anything. But they can also skip that question if they're unsure. Once they are done, there is a submit button for them to turn it in. And once you are done, you can click attach and it'll attach this assignment to Google Classroom for you. It'll attach it directly into here. It will not automatically assign the assignment. And now I can choose to assign, schedule, or save this draft for later. And I have all my other lovely Google Classroom options.